Hi again, everybody. It's Josh Pierce again at underscore J Pierce on Instagram. Um, I've got a tutorial for you today uh, where we're going to be talking about how I created this image, and I'm going to be walking you through um, creating this image. And specifically, what I'm going to be highlighting is um, how I used um, the displacement maps feature. And what I want to instruct you guys about is how you can use. Uh, what I've just released in my first landscape pack, uh, which is a pack of 20 8K 32-bit high-res terrain and landscape displacement maps. And um, you may be looking at this image and saying, yeah, I want to learn how to uh, use these high-quality displacers um, in my 3D renders in Cinema 4D and Octane. And um, if you're looking to um, to understand more about this then um, keep watching and I'm going to show you how to uh, a couple different techniques for using displacement maps um, and um, and bringing them into cinema and getting them to look like this and then and then we'll go through and um, complete this image render so um, we're gonna go ahead and just hop right into cinema so here I am in cinema and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a plane and uh, I'm going to make this plane 4000 by 4000 and um, the first thing I'm going to show you is how you can do this um, basically without even using Octane um, this will work with any renderer whatsoever so what you can use in cinema is um, this deformer called the displacement deformer you'll find it here and um, like I said this will work with standard render physical render this will work with octane it will work with redshift it will work with Arnold any render <laughs> because um, this is not um, this is actually geometry based and it is not um, it's not texture based so um, without further ado I'll show you how to do this so what you do is you place the displacer inside of the plane and then you go to the shading tab under the displacer and then for the shader um, I want to use an image so I'm just gonna click the three dots over here and um, I'm gonna go and find my image which is in my tutorials folder um, and this image this number 11.tiff you'll be able to find inside my um, inside my displacement pack uh, that's available at my Gumroad and um, on my website and I'll put links up for that pack and you guys can go over there when you're ready and um, pick that up it's a pretty cool pack and there's there's 20 of them they're super high quality so um, so this is uh, this is that one it's number 11 so I'm gonna drop it in and um, it says do I want to create a copy no thanks I don't need that right now and um, so here it is it's inside my displacer and um, what I'm gonna do is in order to get this to look right there's a couple tricks I've found and, and that is once you if you're here if you click on the shader um, there's some interpretation settings and I find that um, sRGB uh, works the best for um, for these particular kinds of displacers and um, and then under the object tab I want to set it to intensity and then um, instead of centered I want it as regular intensity so uh, right now I'm not seeing much of anything because it's only 10 centimeters high so let's jump it up to around 350 cool and so now we're getting some sort of landscape happening but yuck it doesn't look very good so um, I'm gonna go over to hidden line mode um, there's the display settings hidden line is kind of my favorite it lets me see the polygons um, and it doesn't it doesn't bother trying to render the textures which is can sometimes get confusing and hard to see so um, what's going on well my plane only has 20 segments by 20 segments so let's bump that up let's go 200 segments by 200 segments okay now we're getting somewhere with some terrain that looks pretty cool and let's bring this up to maybe 550 
maybe 650. Okay, now we're getting something that looks pretty cool. So you can see that I have this river and this, this terrain surrounding it. Um, and let's bring in an octane daylight so that we can see over here what our shading is going to kind of look like. Yeah, so um, with most things in 3D, it's all about lighting. If I put my light like this, it's going to look like hell. <laughs> if I put my light like this, you know, then it picks up some of the shadow details in these little uh, undulations in the in the terrain. So, you know, it's all about lighting and art. art artistic direction when it comes to all of our all your renders so um, you know I'm gonna pick something like something over here I like like that okay um, and you know as far as the texture goes for this um, what I want to do is uh, you know create a new shader C4D octane octane material and what I want to do is just make a really simple glossy material that is black and um, maybe maybe the specular is not super hot so maybe there um, pretty simple material we'll just drop that on and now we've got this crazy looking otherworldly planet thing happening um, it looks like liquid um, and that's cool for right now um, you can take the roughness and maybe bump it up just a little bit and you get this cool looking um, really surreal otherworldly looking um, landscape going on and um, so the next thing I want to show you before I do anything else is you know this is still pretty uh, low poly and um, you know this image map has a lot more detail in it um, than what we're seeing from this representation but at this resolution and if if you're going to have this in the background and this is not a foreground element um, this will work just fine for most applications um, and <clears throat> but what you can do is I want to show you um, you know if you're familiar with cinema one of the ways that you can um, increase the number of polygons is to simply take this object and drop it inside of a polygon uh, in, inside of a subdivision surface object and it's going to add a bunch more polygons and um, I'll show you what that looks like here so it's subdivided it as you can see and there's a lot more polygons and um, it looks cleaner but there's a bit of a gotcha here and the problem is it's smoothing everything out in a way that I don't really like very much so what's what's interesting there's this technique that um, that I recently discovered that the way you stack these matters and what matters is if I have this subdivision surface and this plane and this displacer and they're each a child of the other um, it's going to subdivide this surface after it displaces it so very simply if I take this displacer and I put it below the plane but on the same level as the subdivision surface so if I stack it like this what you can see now is there's way more detail and what happens is it's actually displacing it after the subdivision so it's not smoothing everything out um, it's keeping all these little tiny ridges and um, we're getting a lot more detail um, from this just by um, stacking the two the plane and the displacer inside of a subdivision surface and um, that's gonna kick up your uh, memory usage and everything so just be careful um, when you're adding subdivisions to your plane if I took this up to 400 you're gonna see that it's gonna get really detailed um, and it's gonna be um, significantly slower but those details are um, really getting close to um, being um, being just about as much resolution as there is inside this um, image file so this is how you would create this kind of a landscape without using any kind of um, special renderer 
or anything. And the other nice thing about using this technique to create the displacers is that now if I wanted to add a um, add some clones on top of this, so if I wanted to add an octane scatter, and let's say um, this is just a very rough example, but if I wanted to add some rocks, um, I could use the um, the forester rocks, and let's say I drop them on here, um, and let's make them much smaller. Give them a few more subdivisions and some more deformation. Cool. Um, very rough example, but what I can do is use this surface to clone onto. And um, be careful when you do that because uh, you want to use surface and not, not vertex. So now, um, and obviously this looks terrible, but um, you know, what you can do is this will actually allow you to clone on top of this without having to use any um, extra um, maps in order to get your cloner to apply all along here. So if you want to do trees, if you want to do grass, um, you do you see a lot of my renders I uh, use a lot of uh, nature elements. So use a lot of trees and grass and, and things and, and this is one of the easier ways to get um, clones onto this surface and I'll show you why this is easier in a second so let's um, let's kill all of this so um, we're gonna start over I know oh my god start over so that is using the displacement deformer technique so here we go now we're gonna use the octane displacement um, this is the second technique um, so we start again with a plane. We're going to make it 4,000 by 4,000. I'm going to apply my glossy black texture again. And what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to go into my texture and I'm going to use displacement. And um, if you're looking for the node editor, all you have to do is double click your material and then click on the node editor and it'll pull up the node editor. So in here, this allows you to have a ton of control over your material so in order to use a displacement I have to plug in a displacement node to the displacement port and then I'm going to take an image texture and drag that and connect it to the input of the displacement node and so image texture here now I'm going to go and get my same image 11 and um, so now I've got it loaded in and that's good and f under my displacement node I have some options and I want to make this displacement um, an 8k displacement because that's what my TIFF files are I want to make sure it's following smooth normal that's correct and then um, what did we have 650 so now you can see over here wow the difference is incredible. Um, not only am I seeing all that detail, but um, it's extremely lightweight because I have only 20 segments on my plane. Now the issue is that in my viewport here, I can't, I can't see that detail. I can only see that detail in the Octane uh, um, Live Viewer because I. Um, because it's only using the material because it's an octane material and cinema doesn't have any idea what it's doing but octane does so and that's cool but um yeah but wow the fidelity of this map is incredible you know once you get it to like that and now what's awesome about um so we're going to jump in and start working on um our original scene which uh you know looked uh We'll pull it up again here. Um, this was our original scene. And um, so what's cool is um, we're going to have this water. We're going to have, uh, we're going to stick a little man in there. And um, we're going to have this crazy planet um, with the sun hitting it. 
um, like they were on some kind of exoplanet out in space. Um, so what's cool about um, my um, landscape displacer pack is that all of these landscapes, believe it or not, are actually tileable. And so, um, you know, this river connects up perfectly on both ends. So what I can do is, um, the first thing I'm going to do is reduce the height some. I'll take it down to maybe 250 because you'll see what happens um, when I start tiling this. So I want to add more mountains. Um, so I'm going to go to with four by four tiles. And so now, look at this. Now I've got this crazy looking um, valley. And you'll see that when I scale that down, the um, they get way higher. So um, you have to constantly adjust this height of the displacement. So we'll take it down to 150. That's better. Um, and that looks pretty good. So now we have this long valley here that I can see. Um, and let's see. So we're going to put our little guy somewhere around here. Maybe it was from this angle. Maybe we were looking from this side. What's cool about these is you can go in and explore and say, you know, and look for areas that you find interesting. Yeah, let's use this side. And we'll spin our light around now. And you can play with the lighting. And what's what's amazing about this is, you know, you can use this. I'm going to bring a camera in right here. You know, you can use this and be like a director and, and come in and say like, okay, I like this little ridge here and I like to switch to camera mode when I'm doing this. I like this little ridge here and maybe I want to get up here and, and maybe I want to be over here and, and be looking down into this river valley or I can be looking over here. So, you know, or like this formation here. I want to do, um, you know, I'd like to do a render from this angle. Um, but it's great. You can get in and you can explore this terrain and you can um, come up with stories um, for for whoever is traveling across this terrain or who lives here or whose base is here or what's going on. Um, so let's go back to our camera and um, I'm going to set up our output size at, um, at 1080 by 1350. And um, so we're able to see and and let's put our black bars in I'm going to press shift V and um, go to the view tab and set the opacity to 70 so now we have this texture tiling off into the distance and um, we have a little ledge here where we're going to put our, our guy a little guy standing here so um, and we get in a little closer and um, center this camera down. So that's good. That, that looks pretty good for my camera angle. And I want to add a little bit more detail on top of this. And one way that you can do that is um, by adding in a normal map. And the normal map I'm going to use is from an incredible site that I'm going to be showing you um, that um, has really great resources. It's called uh, CG Bookcase, and I'm gonna uh, link uh, to that guy. I, I support him on Patreon, and um, if you wanna support me on Patreon as well, there is, uh, I'll put a link to that also in the description. Um, so I'm using this rock normal, and this is just a, a generic looking normal map. Uh, and you can see when I drop that in, it adds all this weird detail. Um, and it's way too much, so I'm going to bring it down to 0.2. And that looks better, but uh, it's also too large, so I'm going to press the UV transform button. And that brings up a transform node, and I'm going to just scale it down some. 
and that's just going to give me a little bit of extra a um, little bit of extra noise texture in here and um, now what I want is this is out in space and there's no atmosphere on this planet so I'm gonna go to my octane daylight I'm gonna click on the little Sun icon I'm gonna take the sky color and make that black because we're in space and the Sun I'm gonna make that white because there's no atmosphere to make this to color the, the, the color of the Sun so and now I'm gonna also switch over to path tracing and when I'm in path tracing, I want to set my max samples to 350, so it's not running and running and running. And I'm going to set my GI clamp to four, which is going to help clean up the noise a little bit faster. And um, now we look like we're on some planet out in space, and um, you know, who knows what's going on out here. So. Um, Let's bring in um, our, our, our moon. This is going to be kind of a moon for this planet. And uh, we're going to use a sphere. And I'm going to switch to four views to get this in position properly. I want to slide it away from the camera, you know, back over here somewhere. Uh, rotate it so I can see. And scale it up. and just put it up here like it's rising over the horizon and um, obviously these segments have got to be fixed so first thing is you want to turn off render perfect because if you leave that on it's not going to render in picture viewer um, and you want to change the type to icosa and um, I like to set the segments to around 80 and that smooths it out really nicely and so now I'm going to create a material for this and uh, I'm just going to create a new octane material open up the node editor and um, I have a I have a um, this image which is uh, looks like this it's it's like a 2k image and I'll, I'll put up a link to it it's a free um, fictional planet map so we're gonna use this planet map we're gonna bring that in and um, we're gonna plug it into the diffuse we're also gonna plug it into the bump map and I'm gonna apply this texture to the sphere and I want to use um, a color correction on the bump map and um, let's see so that looks like uh, we've got a planet going on here and that's pretty cool so I'm gonna use a color correction on both actually on the uh, the diffuse channel just to get take some of the brown color out of it that's good and then on the bump channel I want to increase the contrast and and adjust the gamma and and I need to make this material um, glossy material so that uh, and then I need to increase the roughness there we go okay and now we need to decrease the specular and now we're getting something pretty interesting and we're gonna bring up the contrast well we're gonna play with the contrast and the gamma until we get a look that we like right in there somewhere that looks pretty good And um, and now we're going to add this halo ring around the outside. And we're going to do that by using a torus. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the torus inside of the sphere. And then I'm going to go to the coordinates and I'm going to zero it out. So zero, 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 zero. So now it's sitting directly at the same point as the sphere. Then I want to add a tag to this, and I'm going to add a Cinema 4D tag, look at camera. And I want to change the object's orientation to Z+. So now, no matter where I put the camera, once I scale this up, it's going to be facing directly at the camera. 
And if I use these buttons, I can decrease the width of the torus. And now this needs some more segments. So ring segments, we want to set that to the same as our sphere, which was 80. So now um, all I have to do is just match this by using the scale and the mouse. So now our ring is sitting there and I need to make a texture for this. So make another new texture and uh, open up the node editor and go to bring in an RGB spectrum and a texture emission. And I'm gonna plug that into the emission channel and plug the RGB spectrum into the texture emission. And then I wanna enable surface brightness. Um, that just um, helps to keep the same level of brightness no matter what the scale of your object is. And then I will use um, sort of an orangey orangey red I think I had on there maybe a little more red maybe it was a little pink I had a little bit of pink okay we'll try that and we'll apply that to our our torus and now we're getting something that's looking quite a bit more like um, what our reference image looked like and our torus is a little bit too wide so pipe radius we'll start reducing that too far <laughs> and um, now we can start tweaking our ground material and I think the roughness is too high and I think our normal is too high and now what I want to do is um, adjust my Sun so that it's hitting from the top down, sort of like this. And um, maybe our specular can come back up. Yeah, there we go. So now we're getting this nice, um, this nice reflection happening on our surface. And uh, if I come in, zoom in a little more we're going to see more and more detail out of this that's good I like that um, I like that framing and um, yeah it's difficult to balance the, the roughness here with what's going on in the background and the specular so maybe we want our roughness to be somewhere more more like that and you know what, I think what I wanna do is actually not make the sun white. I wanna make it just a little off white. And that's gonna to help too. So now let's add the water in. And very simple, all we need is another plane. And we'll make it the same size, 4,000 by 4,000. And I'm just going to go to the plane's coordinates and start bringing it up. And there it is. There's our there's our beautiful water plane. So now I need another material for the water. Um, I'm going to open it up. Open the node editor. And uh, I want to set this to black again. And I want to use a glossy material. And um, all I have to do now is put a noise shader into the bump channel. And let's apply this to our water. And sometimes it doesn't refresh. There we go. And we've got some water looking stuff, but it's not that good yet. So let's make some tweaks to our noise. Um, typically, I think I set this up around uh, 12 octaves and then um, just adjust the gamma to where it looks uh, nicer. So that's looking pretty nice. 
And again, you know, you can keep moving this camera around if you want to adjust where this is happening, right? And um, if you have a hard time controlling the camera, you know, you can always use the the individual controls. So if I want to just nudge it, you know, this way or this way, or this way, or up and down. Don't be afraid also to use um, the coordinate system over here. And um, one thing you can do is you can hold the Alt key. So if I, I can use these uh, up and down arrows to move my camera around, you know, if I, if I want. And if I use, so that's changing the Y. And if I pr hold the Alt key, it's going to, and then I do the same thing and press these arrows, it's going to move, but at a much smaller increment. I think it's 10% of, um, yeah, so this moves it from 24 to 25 to 26. And by holding Alt, it's going to move it from 26.4 to 26.5 to 26.6. So it just quantizes. Um, it at a scale or at a uh, order of magnitude uh, further by holding the alt key so doing fine adjustments like that um, it's helpful for that so looking at our um, terrain again you know it's all about playing with this roughness factor because we want it to be nice and sharp um, and um, we want to make sure that um, it's not getting too noisy or too difficult to look at. So by adjusting that and by adjusting our daylight and maybe we want our daylight to be even further behind. Yeah. Or from the side. Yeah, more from the side I think is what looking better. Yeah, I think there is, is where I want it. So um, cool, let's bring in our little guy. Let's bring in our little man. You can easily find um, people sculptures here inside of cinema just by opening up the content browser and hitting the search function and then just search for man or person or woman or whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, let's use this guy, super popular. Um, so we just bring him in and this helps just helps to bring us a sense of uh, scale and of space and of story and what's this guy doing out here? Why is he standing on this planet? What is he doing here? Um, and then you can begin to tell your own story about what this person is doing here. Um, so, you know, you just kind of rough it in place and, um, you know, keep watching it in the live viewer and uh, you get him in there and you know and and I didn't get um, looks like his his material didn't update so I'm gonna try convert materials and his material still didn't update so it is in there sometimes with octane you just have to oh there it goes <laughs> you just have to wait and um, you know keep refreshing and sometimes if you just hit this button resend scene it will um, it will update your um, it'll update your materials so now we have this awesome reflection this cool planet and um, let's add some glow into it um, by clicking on our camera and going to the post processing tab press enable and then bring this bloom power up and bring it up yes there we go and so now we have this awesome looking glow and um, finally we're going to add some fog into the scene and we're going to do that by um, hitting object under the uh, live viewer window octane fog volume and I'm going to show you some really quick settings to set up um, a really easy fog the very first thing you always have to do when you bring in a new volume object set this voxel size up way higher um, it's the, the default is five I like to use just 800 is 
is safe um, because if that number is too small, it's going to um, crash your machine. Um, so very first thing, always set that up to at least 800. Um, and then you can bring it down later, but there's almost no reason to typically do that. So um, not when you're doing fog. Um, you need a smaller voxel size when you're doing uh, more detailed clouds and things. But for a fog layer, um, you just need something very large, like, like 800. So, and then the size of this, because um, this basically generates a box of fog. So for this box of fog, I want it to cover my whole scene. So I'm going to start with 4,000 by 4,000 by 4,000. And it has completely made my scene black, and that's fine. Um, and I can rotate this around so that um, I can see where it is. Now if I zoom out on my above angle, you know, I see my camera is here, my planet is here, and this is my ground. So I want my fog to basically cover the area between the planet and the camera. But I don't want the fog to be covering the camera like that, because then it's going to be um, hazy right on top of the camera. And I don't, want to, I don't actually want the fog to start until just in front of the camera. So my man is standing right here-ish. So I want the fog to start somewhere around there. And that's just a guesstimate for right now. But um, you can see that it's still, it's made my scene completely black. And um, to fix that, I have to go to the medium tab. I want to change these colors to both be pure white on the on the absorption and on the scattering and then um, I can change the step length to to around 60 and um, and then I want to bring this start dialing this way down Cool. So I don't like this uh, sun shaft that's being created, so I'm just going to drag this down and make this kind of a layer of fog. And there we go. And now, now we're seeing this nice little layer of fog looking um, happening. So this is what you can do um, with the terrain displacers from my displacement pack, which I'm going to link in the description. And um, yeah, and in post, you know, you can add some stars in, you can add some color correction um, and, and just go to town with these things and make all kinds of crazy fantasy space renders. So um, I just want to thank you again all for watching. Um, please consider supporting me on Patreon or um, going ahead and picking up one of my landscape packs. Um, I really appreciate you guys. I hope you learned a lot. I can't wait to see. Um, what kind of art you make with this tutorial, um, hit me up on Instagram, um, at underscore jpierce. Uh, thanks a lot, and uh, happy rendering.